right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another NDD live training. We are covering the Easy One Air Spirometer again this month, and we're gonna be going over how to perform the Force Vital Capacity Maneuver or an FVC with the Easy One Air device. So during this training, we are going to review how to correctly perform the FVC test with the Easy One Air. We're going to go over proper spirometry technique. We're going to review session quality grades and then wind up with some common error messages. So what exactly is spirometry? Spirometry measures how much air you can breathe in and out of your lungs, as well as how easily and how fast you can blow the air out of your lungs. So a force vital capacity test is a, the, one of the most common tests used to measure the amount of air someone can forcefully expel out of their lungs after taking the biggest deep breath possible. A value is in liters. Um, that's how that is typically expressed for FVC. And this measure, uh, this measure is a very important indicator of lung health. My slides got away from me just a little bit there. I apologize. So what are some other important parameters in a spirometry test? So the FEV1, which that is the volume or the amount of air that is forcefully exhaled in the first second. The FVC is the total amount or volume of air that has been forcefully exhaled after a maximum inspiration, after the biggest breath in. And then there's the FEV1 FVC ratio. This is the percentage of that total lung capacity that you are able to get out in that first second. All right, spirometry reference values. Where do we get our normals from? Um, these predicted values are obtained from large studies of healthy people. Um, predicted values can depend on the patient's height. So we always wanna make sure that we measure that accurately. Their age, their biological gender, and then their race or ethnicity. On the Easy One Air Spirometer, there is an option to input a patient's weight. Now, weight is not a factor used in our predicted value sets, but extremes in weight can reduce lung function. And when you enter the weight on the device, it just calculates a BMI for your provider to see on their test results. So repeatability criteria for spirometry for spirometry. So we always say we want that minimum of three good, acceptable, reproducible tests. So after a minimum of three acceptable FVC trials has been obtained, we want the two largest FVCs and the two largest FEV1s to be almost identical within 0.15 liters of one another. So if those criteria have not been met, we want to keep testing the patient until we either meet criteria with more trials, the patient can't or should not continue, or we've reached a maximum of eight trials. So the steps for instructing an FVC test on the, F on the Easy One Air. So the patient can sit up straight. They can stand if that's more comfortable for them. We always wanna make sure that we instruct the patient to elevate their chin off of their chest, extending their neck slightly. This position just allows for the most forceful exhalation possible. And we always want to remember to place nose clips on the patient because we wanna make sure that we're capturing every last bit of air that is coming through the spirometer. We want them to place the mouthpiece. This is the flow tube mouthpiece that the Easy One Air uses. There's grooves on the top and the bottom. We always want to tell them to put their teeth on top, tongue on the bottom, making a good tight seal with their lips, not playing it like a trumpet or um, obstructing the flow tube with their tongue in any way. We're going to instruct them to make that good tight seal, take the biggest deep breath in possible, filling your lungs with as much air as possible. And then the last step without hesitating, we're gonna have them blast their air out hard and fast into the spirometer. We're gonna encourage the patient to keep blasting, keep going until a complete exhalation has occurred. So to the point of plateau, when the device is sensing no more air is coming out of the patient's lungs. So obtaining good spirometry tests, we always wanna demonstrate the maneuver. Um, a lot of times when I train offices, I tell them to you know, keep their own flow tube as a practitioner, keep it in their pocket so that they can show how to make a good tight seal and they can demonstrate and practice the test before the spirometer is ever in the patient's hands. We always wanna use body language for a maximal inhalation. And then we wanna loudly 
prompt them to blast out their air. So making sure that we're being really animated and showing them exactly what's expected. We want to encourage the patient throughout the test to keep going, keep blowing, keep blowing. You're almost there. And during each maneuver, we want to watch the patient carefully for errors. The patient entry screens on the Easy One Air look like this. It's eight pages to go through. Um, it's a quick entry on your touch screen that will um, give you the information you need not only to catalog the patient, but then to establish those predicted value sets. So first name, last name, patient ID, birthday, gender, height in feet and inches, weight, and then their ethnicity. You'll, fi you'll click finish when you're done, and then it'll return you to the main menu so that you're ready to test. All right, I'm going to take down my slides for just a moment so that you guys can see me just a little bit bigger. So I am going to just do an FVC maneuver for you on the device. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the flow tube into the Easy One Air device, lining up arrow to arrow. We want to make sure that it's inserted all the way. Okay, it's storming a little bit in Missouri, so I apologize if there is a glare at all. I'm going to select myself as the patient, and then I'm going to select to do an FVC maneuver. You have one last chance to double check the patient entry that you just put in when you added the new patient, and then you're going to click to start the test. At the beginning of all of our FVC tests, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to block the flow tube. This just gives the point-to-point -point ultrasound a moment to zero out and get ready to test. So you can do that either with a gloved hand to the back of the device, or you can leave the plastic wrap that the flow tube came in on for this quick self-check. So I have the flow tube blocked. I'm going to click Start Test. Again, the first thing it's saying is to block the Easy One flow tube, avoid any flow through the mouthpiece. I'm going to click OK. The coaching bar is going to give me an audio cue and tell, turn green and tell me to blast out. So sometimes it doesn't always pick up in my microphone, but while you're doing the maneuver, there are some audio cues as well as those real-time graphics on your touch screen. So the audio cues start really, really, really fast right when the patient begins to blast out, and then they get slower and slower and slower as the patient nears a point of plateau. So again, we don't want just one trial. We want to get three that are both acceptable and reproducible. So my coaching bar is telling me that that was a good effort and to go ahead and do the next. So I am going to click on add trial and repeat the test. Nose clips on, good tight seal, teeth on top, tongue on bottom, biggest breath possible and immediately blast it out as hard and as fast as I can. Okay, the audio cues indicated that I was finished with that trial. I had reached that point of plateau. I had emptied my lungs completely. The coaching bar is again telling me good effort, do next. And it starts to pull in a little bit of preliminary data there on the coaching bar. It'll give me a session quality grade. It will go over that a little bit more in a moment. And it'll also give me just a couple of parameters like the FEV1 there on the coaching bar. We will also go over here in just a moment. Some of times, the coaching bar doesn't always say good effort, do next. And we'll go through those in detail here in just a moment. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this trial for you all so you can see what it looks like at the end. So in my coaching bar, I'm gonna click add trial. Nose clips on, teeth on top, tongue on bottom. Instruct the patient to make a good tight seal. Deep breath in and blow it out as hard and as fast as they can. The trial ended. The audio cue um, gave me the um, alert that it was done. And now my coaching bar is saying session complete. So it's telling me to go view the data or view the test results. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And again, I apologize, there will probably be a glare. But on the results screen, 
try to get it tilted. The results screen will be on one side with the flow volume and volume time curves on the other. Below your test results, you'll see um, your, your parameters, your FEV1, your FVC, and then you'll see your session quality grade. Below that, there will be, a, if you have chosen to include interpretation in your reports, there will be a brief interpretation. Like right now, mine is just saying normal spirometry, and that's just based off of the ATS um, diagnostic tree. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen again. All right, and click on to the next test. So that is that screen that I was not able to show you very well on camera, but you can see that those graphs are on the left, your actual values are on the right, and down below that it pulls out those two most important parameters, session quality grade, and then the interpretation. So when the patient has met both the repeatability and acceptability criteria, you will receive that message in the coaching bar indicating that the session is complete. You always want to end a trial with a session quality letter grade of an A or a B. So expanding a bit on those test session quality grades. So think of it like school. We want to have an A or a B, just knowing that those tests are a really good picture of what the patient is actually doing. So with an A, I won't read through all of these with you guys, but on an A, we know that that's three or more acceptable tests that are very, very close to each other. They're repeatable. Two of those tests are a best match within 100 mLs. In that, in the um, standards go on and on down through an F, meaning that there were no acceptable maneuvers during this test. So the spirometry test session quality grades, those indicate the degree of confidence that can be placed in these results. Those grades are displayed and they're also printed on the Easy One spirometry reports. Common error messages. So. Again, in a perfect world, the coaching bar says, good effort, do next after every single trial. We understand though, sometimes just um, getting the patient to understand how to perform the test correctly, maybe the patient coughs during the test, maybe the patient um, is just very, very ill, their lungs are in a, um, at a place where getting that great spirometry test on the first try isn't reasonable. So these are some of the most common errors that we hear as trainers that show up in the coaching bar. So the first one is the please blow out longer. So the patient has not completely exhaled to their point of plateau. So the device was still sensitive seen air coming out of that patient. So to fix that, we just want to tell the patient, you know, we're going to keep coaching you. The device is going to keep measuring air as long as it senses it coming out. So just encouraging them to keep blowing, keep trying, even when they feel like there's no air left in their lungs at all until the device does end the trial. An abrupt end of test detected. So the patient may not have exhaled completely. A lot of times this is um, a patient that has coughed. So they take their big deep breath in, they start to blast out, and then they just start coughing. Um, take the device out of their mouth for some reason. We're just not completely exhaling when we get that abrupt end of test detected message. Another very common error message is patient hesitation detected. That just means that we have missed the FEV1 parameter. Remember that FEV1 measurement is we are measuring the amount of air that the patient was able to forcefully exhale in the first second. So if they take their big deep breath in and then they kind of hesitate, don't immediately blast out, we have missed that first second. We have missed that parameter completely. And that is a very, very important one. So we want the patient to understand, I always say kind of like playing a violin, big breath in, immediate breath out, one solid motion. And then the last one is blow out faster. Um, there's a measurement at the very top of that exhalation where we punch it out hard and fast that is the peak flow. If the patient takes their big deep breath in, and then just breathes casually. They're not blasting it out. You know, most birthday candles, stickiest spider web, and they're just casually breathing out. We're gonna miss that peak flow measurement. So again, encouraging them big breath in and then blasting out the air as hard and as fast as they can. That is the end of the slide deck. I know that Joy is on if there's been any questions. Um, if you have questions that are popping up now, um, over in the side um, in your control panel for GoToWebinar, there is a um, questions section. You can type in your questions there for us to be able to see. Um, Joy, do you have any questions that have popped up right now? I do. Um, awesome. We have, can you show where it shows the quality grade? They missed it. I believe they mean when you were oh, yeah. the test right on the let, easy one air. 
Oh, hang on. Let me get back here. Here we are. So um, if you want this in a PDF form, please feel free. You'll get a follow-up email from this presentation tomorrow that will have my contact information in it, and it'll have the recording from this presentation. But if you want this slide deck in a PDF form, something that you can reference back later, absolutely reach out to me and I can get that to you. This is a lot to remember A through F and each um, each letter grade is pretty close to one another. So if this is something that you would like to access after the training is over, just absolutely follow up with me when we're done and I can get this sent over to you. But as you can see, it really is just going step by step. You know, we want the test to be acceptable, meaning they meet ATS criteria. And then we also want them to be reproducible, meaning from one trial to the next to the next, they are looking almost identical with that criteria for an A being two of those tri trials being within 100 mls of one another and that would show up after session oh. complete and after each effort correct yes correct sorry i was trying to get back to this screen oh, and my sorry. mouse is being yeah. a little crazy today but yes at the end on your easy one air device you will see that session quality grade right there on the results screen it will also print on the reports right all right um Oops, let's see. Some of us had technical difficulties at the beginning. Oh, can no. this video be yeah? Um, can this video be rewatched? Absolutely. So tomorrow, um, I always have them set to go out next day. So you will get the email that will have my contact information in it, and it will also include the uh, the training recording. How do you delete an unacceptable maneuver during the test? So let me, we will, um, we're gonna go back a screen because I want to look at this screen again. So this screen, this result screen, it's not only accessible, or let me rephrase that. You can get to it before you complete a session. So on the coaching bar between trials, there are two different options. There will be the option to add a trial or to view the data. So between each of these trials, you can choose to view the data. And actually, let me bring my screen down because I am still on my physical device. So I'm not sure if you can see, there it is. But so this is between trials and you can see that right there in the middle, there is a little trash can icon. So you can delete the trial while you are testing. Once you have finished the test though, you cannot go back in and edit. So you can delete as you go along, um, but it'll just be need, it'll need to be done um, trial by trial. And could you show us how to dock and print? Absolutely. Let me jump my screens here again. And let's go back. Let's go back to here. Because this is what the results screen is going to look like, <clears throat> excuse me, once you have completed a session. So as you can see down at the bottom, you have a several different options. You can choose to add a trial to your current test. If you're doing a pre and post bronchodilator testing, you can add a post from this screen. And then there is the print icon and the finish icon. So if from this screen, you take your device and immediately dock it while this screen is still on the device, you can just hit the print button and it will print if you are directly connected to a printer from your dock. If you are wanting to come back and print at a later time, you can click finish and then you can just go back into the patient report at a later time, pull the report up on the device, dock it and print it that way. So again, if you are connected to a computer from the dock, pulling into the Easy One Connect software, that is an option. Or if you are connected directly to a printer from the back of the dock, all you have to do is place the device and hit the print icon. Okay, we have about four more questions. Okay. Um, the next one is, will we receive a certificate for attending this training? You will, and it will also be included in that follow-up email tomorrow. Okay. And sorry, just wanna go back here and go in order. Will <laughs> uh, viral bacteria filters be available in the near future? Most of the filters available now will not fit on these mouthpieces. You are correct. And yes, there is a filter solution that is available now. Um, because of the shape of our mouthpiece, 
we actually have uh, manufactured an adapter that will fit onto the back of this mouthpiece and allow you to an attach a viral filter. So as you can see here, sorry, I apologize. When I have my screen up, I can't see myself on camera. So we actually do have an adapter that fits onto the back of the flow tube. Let me assemble this really quick just so you can see what it all looks like together. So there is an adapter that can be placed on the back of the flow tube that allows a bacterial filter to be attached. Um, if you need more information about ordering, um, if you have filters, we have some specific diameters um, that can be used with our adapters, or if you need to purchase adapters and filters, um, just shoot me a message after this is over and I can get those um, part numbers to you. They can be ordered through distribution, they can be ordered through us, but they are available um, during this time of pandemic if you guys need to add that to your uh, workflow. How do you safely clean the device between participants and patients, particularly during this COVID time? Okay, so cleaning the device itself, um, NDD has always had a pretty high cross-contamination standard. You know, our mouthpieces are completely open flow. The design of the device, is, I don't, it's kind of hard to see here, but the, really it is impossible for contaminants to get inside the device. So for the device itself, you would just use an approved, a hospital approved disinfectant, wipe it down, wait the recommended time. I know that's not super specific, but you know, every office uses a different cleaning protocol. Um, it would, you would just follow your surface protocol that your infection control has established for your office. Um, as far as using inline filters, that's really to protect you as the practitioner. Um, but as for cleaning between rooms, you really just have to kind of default to the surface protocols that your infection control has set forth for your office. Um, but as far as, um, you know, mouthpieces are single patient use, filters, are, filters and adapters would also be single patient use, and then wiping down the device per your facilities protocol between patients. Okay, just a couple more. Can this test be run through a computer so you can see the test on the computer screen? It absolutely can. Um, however, this device works using Bluetooth. So you can, um, with our Easy One Connect software, you can connect via Bluetooth, the Easy One Air, to the software just to have the bigger picture, um, to have the patient incentives visual uh, visible on a computer screen. I actually almost demonstrated doing it connected, but I didn't just for time's sake. Um, but you, you would want to check with your IT, make sure that the security, um, the security would match your facility's um, guidelines and qualifications for, uh, for Bluetooth use in the hospital or a clinical setting, but that is absolutely something that we can help you get set up. Okay, a couple more here. I connected to a computer to change the displayed parameters, but it didn't okay. change on the device once I disconnected. Okay. So when, from the Easy One Connect software, there's a couple of different ways, um, test by test, to change the parameters. Um, I don't have Easy One Connect open on my device right now, but I can absolutely um, get, I can get your contact information off of here and we can get that um, sorted out. Um, when you go into the utilities on, in the Easy One Connect software, um, you'll go under the test tab and then you'll see each individual test listed at the top of that table. From there, you'll go into the parameters and one side of the screen is for what you see on the device and then the other side of the screen is what appears on the printout. So we'll just confirm that those were put in the right place when you did go in to make those adjustments and uh, we can get that figured out for you. For how long does the patient blow out? I believe that if we pass a number on the graph, it would be okay, but I don't remember what the number was. Maybe a number <laughs> six is the key to something? The number six <laughs> has always been the gold standard. So, and the number, the six second mark is still bolded on the Easy One Air device and on the Easy One Connect software. Um, the six second mark is actually no longer a part of the ATS guidelines. They have changed the verbiage to that. The patient will exhale till, until plateau. Um, you can still enforce that six second mark. Um, most patients will enter just before or just after the six second mark. But nope, you're not remembering incorrectly. The six second mark has always kind of been the gold standard. They need to breathe out for at least six seconds. But now, like me, I always empty prior to the six second line. And ATS says that's now okay because I reached my personal point of plateau. 
and oh, it is okay. One more question just came in. It awesome. is my understanding that in order to delete a trial, I need to be logged in with a username and password. We have more than one tester using this device, and that has given us grief in the past. So I, okay. sorry, I have to scroll no. here. I apologize. Um, so just want to confirm, can I still delete a trial if not logged in as a specific user? You can. So a little, little bit of a tricky answer here. So on the device as a standalone, you can absolutely do that. Um, same thing on the Easy One Connect software, you can still do that. You do not have to have the user handling set up to do that. It will ask you for a user ID when you do that. If you don't have user handling set up, what most offices do is they just enter their initials when they do that, because then it just logs that, you know, JB deleted trial three. So it doesn't have to be a specific username. You don't have to have it linked to your Windows user ID. Your user handling does not need to be turned on in order to access that, it will ask you for a user ID, but it does not have to be linked to anything. So it can be just you entering your initials or your name to delete that test. Okay, where can I get the software to install on a new computer? You can get the software from our website, which is, I think I have it on the next slide. Let me bring that back up. All right, you can get the uh, you can get the downloads for the software on our website, which is ndgmed.com. Those are going to be under resources, and then downloads, and then software. So anytime we release a new software update, it is going to be on that website. You have to fill out a very quick form just with your name and information, the serial number of your device, and then you can obtain that link to download the software. Okay, and now it just looks like we have a few thank yous from those whose questions you addressed. So thank you, okay. Jamie. It yeah. looks like that is all of the questions we have for this session. Awesome. And absolutely, guys, if, if other questions come up, if I didn't explain your question in a way that made sense to you, or if I didn't quite hit the mark, absolutely, my name and uh, email address is at the bottom of this slide. Jot it down. If not, it's going to be included in that follow-up email tomorrow. I am always happy to help your site get the best use out of your Easy One Air device. I'm always open for questions to troubleshoot or anything that you guys would need in follow-up of this training. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, again, you will automatically get the email with the certificate and the recording tomorrow to the email that you registered for the webinar um, and then any other questions absolutely direct them to myself and we will get you all taken care of all right well if that is it joy we will go ahead and wrap up thank you guys so much for attending the live easy one air training um, please reach out if you have any questions and we'll see you all again soon thank you have a great day Bye,